Well, when it comes to electrical, permits can be the difference between life and death. Electrical shock, fire, even explosions can happen if a house isn't wired properly. We're looking at electrical nightmares. The electrical is mm. unacceptable. Like, we haven't found them all yet, but we're looking at around 20 junction points. Now, because they're accessible, it's allowed. Okay. Mm. Tying into existing lines is not allowed. It appears that's what they've done everywhere here. Okay. This here is a complete live line. Is okay? it really? This one here. Is? This one here is live. These two were just tied in as a temporary. They're going to tie back in later. I remember you saying that the electrician was going to come back and tie everything in. What was here? Was that covered? What was here? It was drywall. Yeah, it was drywall. Drywall. That's right. That's a little scary, considering that they're now putting our life at risk if something happened. And I mean, they could have burned our house down. Look at the electrical. Junction point, junction point, that's two. Junction point, that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This side alone. We obviously see more over there. Every single existing line has been tapped into. That means that these circuits could be and probably are overloaded, and that is an extreme fire hazard. Every single one of these will have to be traced down, put back the way it was, with junction points now in the attic space. Frank's gonna have a hairy. You're gonna love the way they did the pot lights in the ceiling down here. We had uh, we had some proper pot lights with housing, and then the other pot lights, no housing. There's only two with housing. So we had all the insulation in with retrofits. It clearly says it right on the retrofit pot light that within three inches of insulation, you don't use it. Well, that was piled, clearly says it. Piled right over it. Yeah, well, nice little fire hazard. They had uh, receptacles coming off of the, the lighting circuit, which is 100% uh, incorrect. Uh, they need to be arc fault protected since it's going to be used as a bedroom. So we're just going to be pulling out whatever we have and just rerunning it brand new. So you have to wonder, one, what's behind the walls? Two, was the electrical work done by a licensed electrician? How about three, did they have a permit? Before you buy a house, get it inspected. Have someone inspect the electrical and give you an idea of past problems and potential future concerns. In this case, Lisa actually rented out her home to someone that she thought was good people. I got a phone call from my son and he said they were using the house for a marijuana grow up. I've read a lot about it, but never have I ever seen the damage. That's left behind. Look how neat this is. All on timers. Everything's scheduled to go on and off when they wanted to. More lines run. Look at this. Oh, they have a sub panel there. OK. Electrical nightmare. Foundations drilling in, tapping into electrical. Here's where they tapped in. Look at this. They poured an eight-inch hole. Missed on the first one, came back up, hit the second one. And how did they tap? Oh, they tapped in right there. Are you kidding me? That, I don't believe that. That's just pure raw power. I'm surprised they didn't get killed. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that depending how the bills were set up on this home, if the bills were set up under the homeowner's name, their charge may end up being between thirty to $40,000. What? For I what? kid you not. For the stolen power. You're kidding. It's like a fine? It all depends, because someone's going to have to pay for the power that, that's been stolen. This is like a $100,000 repair, plus fines of thirty, forty thousand. dollars 40000 My God, and that's just the beginning. I haven't even gone through the house yet. I'm really working my way up. Wish I had better news. Uh. Hydro's losing a ton of money due to grow ups. A lot, and, it, and we have no real way of knowing exactly how much, because there's so many out there that we don't know. Because of this situation that we've got right here, is there's no way to detect it. In this case, we saw seven 60 amp breakers on a 200 amp panel. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot of power they'd be using, wouldn't it? Yeah, they could be using anywhere from uh, 100 kilowatt hours a day to uh, 700 kilowatt hours a day in a, in a place like this. Um, normal home uses 45 in this, like this area. Wow, I had no idea it was this bad. No idea at all. Two out of every three houses that are used as marijuana grow-ups have hydro diversions on them. So that's costing everybody money because the power is essentially stolen from the hydro grid.
not only is the house cold, but you have electrical problems too, and then you start not feeling safe in your own house. What's wrong with the electrical? We've identified that this is a circuit that's got like 19 devices on it or something <laughs> like that. There was too many things on this one circuit. Right. It was not in the report. No. But we did have permits for the kitchen. Yeah. You checked. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you didn't check to see if there's electrical, did you? No. I will bring an electrician. I will check to see if there was an electrical permit. They always leave two spare breakers in the panel, right? And that's the idea that if you do, you add something, yeah, yeah, an air conditioning, something like that. Now, this is our obviously full. Now, the funny thing in here is that we did cut, a, I'm going to say that's a 30 amp line. Somebody's cut that off. I don't know where it leads to. We'll find out. I'll bring in Frank, my electrician. He's going to take a look at the place and see what not only the other contractor has done, but possibly what his Neil has done here. And when I talked to Neil, he talked about uh, the dishwasher was hooked up to other lines. Now, it shouldn't be. Uh, the receptacles on the counter are supposed to be on their own and should have been from the old kitchen. So where'd those lines go is my point. They all had their own lines before. Where the hell did they go? Things like your dishwasher, things like your counter plug need their own breaker. Right. They do have a heavier load. So what they've done here is simply done the addition and tapped off whatever circuit was available. So every time they want to use the coffee maker and the dishwasher at the same time, they trip the breaker downstairs. Well, what we're doing here is uh, we're pulling a line for the, uh, one's going to be for the counter plug, and the other one's going to be for the dishwasher. How, many, how much more, Dave? That's all? We still have to pull uh, one more for the uh, other counter plug and for the microwave hood fan. Let's start off with the panel here. Joe, he really separated everything and had to run a couple of new lines and, and made sure that the dishwasher's on its own, the fridge is on its own, the receptacles were proper all the way. Uh, he also itemized everything, all the breakers. We want to know what they are. And the best thing I love about this, there's two of them. One being that we have a total surge protector on your house. And on top of that, something new that I'm not used to is we have this little sticker on the box here, right here. And that sticker is because the ESA came in to inspect oh. the electrical. They marked the box. This is a new system. And it's, okay. they can identify through the number that somebody was here and okayed it. So oh, it's all been passed. Oh, and I'm happy. It's cleaned up. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you. Our jobs are done. No. Oh, okay. so, Thank you. I sound like a page. Take electricity seriously. Hire people who think the same way and back it up by getting permits. It's worth it. Worth the money. Worth the security. And when you can, learn about new ways to use less electricity in your home.